Now uh, first thing, whatever you do, do not swat them. <laughs> just let them be. Yeah. Why, are you, why is that one white? That one's painted. So that's, just, the, that's it. Yeah, this is... Yeah, because we had to get it from Drapers because we needed it right mm -hmm. away. And they have them painted. Oh, okay. But this is the swarm that she cut. Okay. And then those are the four original ones. This metal piece right here, it helps block. But, um, it slides over so you can cut down like mice getting in there and whatnot. I see. It also helps it defend the nest because if there's too many robbing bees coming in, it can overwhelm them. Listen to the sound change on this though. They're humming in there now. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much I'm just telling them I'm coming in. Yeah, because I cleaned that right out. That's a bee brush. Okay. Hive tool. This is for picking up frames. All right, yeah. If I can't get my finger into them. And this, you just put on the edge and... Like a shelf? Yep. Okay. This one's not very glued together. Well, I just loosened it. Oh, you did? It wasn't very stuck, though. And it's glued because of the wax? This is, yeah. that's poplar right here. Okay. And th that's how they seal their hive up. Oh, okay. That's like um, tree resin. Okay. These frames have a plastic foundation. Okay. This is how you use it. Okay. And that's actually covered, or it should have like a um, beeswax coating on it. Now, what are you checking for? Um, I'll show you in a second. Okay. These are unused yet. Usually what I do is I take two out and it just gives you enough space to move everything in here. But you also don't want to mess them up as you pull, pull them out because you want to keep them in the same order. Okay. Nothing on that side, but you can see Plenty. how they've started there. Oh yeah. That is pollen right there, and that is the start of honey. That's your nectar. And this is, they just started on this one. That right there is baby bees. If you look real close in those ones, you can see really quite young ones are a little curled white thing. Underneath the caps? Or inside these ones here. There's white ones in there? Yep. Oh, I see it. Yep. Yeah. That's your um, younger brood. Huh. The eggs will look like is even smaller grain of rice in there. Taller ones right there. Okay. Those are most likely uh, the drones. Younger cap. That's older cap right there. Okay. So that means that they're about to come out? They're pretty close. Okay. Honey, a row of pollen, and then the brood right here. All right. It's also really weird to look, when you're looking down here, all you see is eyes looking back at you. <laughs> That's all hatched out. You notice how it's darker? You're right. The comb gets darker as they use it. Now, will they reuse that? Um, they will. For what, it all depends on what they need. Now they might they might lay again, or they might just try to fill it up for storage for winter. For winter. Yeah. But there are some new bees in there. All that is, how long ago? About a month ago? Yeah. Yeah, all of this is new, newly built. So it's quite fast. They can be. Like, if you ordered packaged bees, it's going to take longer. Because when I caught that swarm, we already needed two boxes just for the bees. So they could build really fast. Okay. Because the others, you got to wait for bees also. Yeah, because okay. usually at the packet, so it probably takes a good week for them to really start building a lot. I'm trying to find a queen that's like the finder. She's probably on the bottom frame. Oh, yeah. She's probably hiding. See that um, the one right there at the bottom? That one right there. That is most likely a um, queen cup. It's just an emergency. So it's a queen cut? Cup. 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 Oh, okay. Yeah. What they do is they, um, they usually have some on standby, just in case. That's a really good example of one. See these two lighter ones right there? That bee. There's a lighter one and there's yes. a lighter one. Those ones likely just hatched not too long ago. Okay. The older they are, the darker they look. They don't get larger though, do they? They hatch at this size or? I think they might get a little bit bigger. They're maybe yeah. a little bit bigger, but not, not by much. Okay. Is not where you want it to be. Okay.
that was actually between the frames. And what I just did there was kind of stupid. Wasting. Usually what people do is they save that and then they keep it for the wax. Oh, okay. More BBBs, which is what you want to see. And that's all hatched out. This one doesn't seem to have very many drones in it, which is fine with me. Some of the hives over here have way too many drones. They won't merge? No. Well, they'll, they'll find queens that need to be um, fertilized, but all the drones, that's all they do is hang out, eat, and find the queens. Okay. And for some reason, bees do not like to do the outside. Actually, there's a lot. That's mostly pollen on that one. But you see, there's nothing on no. this side. Yeah. They don't like to do the outside rows. So sometimes what you have to do is you have to... Just turn it. Yeah. Either flip it around or you move this one here and that one to the outside so that they... Oh, we're supposed to use that. Oh, okay. So you keep them in the same order then? You try to, but there's times when you can just move things around. Okay. If you ever get bees, I would suggest going the plastic route. Okay. Because I'll show you why, because these ones don't have the plastic. Water doesn't get down through from rain or anything? Um, it, I think it's dovetailed in there. Okay. I mean, you can kind of see where it's splitting. I probably should paint them. And those bees are probably mad at you because you're blocking their way. <laughs> in, in the, um, there's only one entrance. Yeah. And exit. Some hives, they, um, they all have like a little notch up here where they, they can fly in at the top. You see this one right here? Okay. That's what, um, when we say they're fanning, because that one's wings are actually flapping and they're sending the pheromones out of the hive saying, get back in here. Oh, I see. That or um, if it gets too hot in here, they'll do, they'll fan to regulate the temperature in the hive. Okay. So at the very bottom, is there a space then? Yep. Okay. There's, they call it bee space. It's a certain measurement. From here to the front, I think the frames are like about right in this area. Okay. And then there's a little bit of space here. And then there's there's a little bit of space between here and the top. Okay. You can't go over a certain amount because then they'll start building. Oh, right. I mean, they'll, they'll still try to build in there, but it's more cramped than what they want. That's when you have problems where you have to break the things apart and then make them mess. Right, okay. So all these one's coming in right now are the forager bees where the nurse bees and everything will stay inside and these are the actually the ones that you see are flying are the ones that will most likely sting you okay that's all new comb right here the bar right here this is what you want them to build on and it tries to keep them going straight but sometimes it doesn't work <laughs> because of how these are attached you can't go this way, you have to go this way. You have the chance of the comb just snapping right okay. off. Just because of how new it is. These cells right here, those are worker sized. These ones right here, see how, much, how they're quite bigger? Right. Those are drone cells. And that's it's just how big the cell is that when they made it. So what do they do with the empty cells? They'll probably fill this with honey. Okay. Depending on how good they do during the um, goldenrod and how much they get filled I, for this winter, I might have to take this entire box off and just give them the one down there because I don't, you don't want them to have a bunch of empty space that they have to regulate. Right, right. You want to keep them condensed and they don't have to heat the whole place. This bottom one is all full. Oh, there's a drone right there. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. it's a lot bigger. <laughs> yep. And they do not have a stinger. Queen have stinger? Yes, she does. Hers is not far though. Okay. Because what happens when they um when they're getting new queen, they make a bunch of them so that they're not they don't have all their fish in the bucket. Okay. And the first queen out will go and try to kill the other queens by stinging them in their cell uh, before they hatch. Okay. And that. That's why it's not barred because then she died if, right. <laughs> if it was. Yeah, that makes sense. There's a lot of drones yeah. in that one, isn't there? These are all drones. Oh, I see it. Fuzzier. Yeah. Big eyes. The older the comb gets, the harder it gets. Where this one, I can't really put my finger through. Okay. But if that was fresh comb, my finger would go right through. All right. Hoping the queen would show up. <laughs> Actually, right there. See that bottom corner? Right, that yeah, thing. That's a queen cup. Okay. That's a better looking version of one. The yeah, queen cups are usually on the bottom. 
emergency cells would be like something like a long pea sized one coming off like here. Okay. Because what they do is they take a normal brood that's still growing and hatching and they just build it into a bigger cell so that she can go into a queen. Okay. I haven't really seen any breeding this one yet. Which is not good. This hive is um, a new one too, isn't it? Yep. This is what we got from drapers in the okay. box. Okay. No good. Not good. That means I my queen might be missing. Don't have a queen. They're not angry though. Come on, brood. Off the honey. Actually, yeah, you, you can actually feel the weight through the honey on that one. Oh yeah. That's actually pretty light to some frames. So that it's the top half that is honey, right? Yep. Okay. There's two different versions of bees, how they um, cover their their um, cappings. There's um, some that'll leave like an air space over top okay. and it'll be a white, whereas some of them seal it right stuck to it. So it'll be like a darker color with like the honey underneath it. Okay. And it's just the way they are. They can't communicate with each other. And what happens, if one bee stings you, that stinger leaves a pheromone trail for other ones to be like, hey, uh, that, that's our guy right there. Okay. See how much propolis is on this one? Yeah. That's not good or bad? Um, it's actually good. It's almost, it's actually uh, antibiotic, actually. Okay. Because all they're doing is sealing up for everything. And they actually make like it's like a screen. Get out of there. Okay. I don't want you in there. That just he was trying to steal from them. <laughs> oh, okay. But um what you do, they put like a grate over it, and then the bees will fill it in, and that's how they harvest it. And it melts by heat also? Um, I'm not actually sure. I mean it does dry out eventually and make like a it gets pretty hard like it gets pretty hard, but this, I think this stuff is pretty new mm -hmm. because it's still syrupy. That's what I'm breaking every time I have to get in here. Okay. I have to break this free or um, I have the chance of actually breaking the frame if I'm pulling it out without breaking it free. Okay. Because that's just like stapled and glued right, that's all that's holding this together is right there in the corner. You knew they were empty? Yep. I can see down okay. into it. See how that's twisting out right here? Yep. That is not what I want. But the, the plastic pretty much tells them, hey, go straight across. You won't oh, have issues. What is that? Is that? Is that, that is a bug. <laughs> I have no idea what that is. That is a lot. Feel how heavy that is. Yeah. That's real heavy. Yep. And that's not even full. Wow. That's so. Mm hmm If this was a full box of pipe, I believe it's around 50 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> that's why most people, I mean, you don't have to have different size boxes. You can do all this size or all medium. Mm -hmm. it, it just depends on how much you want to carry. All these are the big boxes, right? Yeah, these are all, all big ones out here. Because I want to give them enough space to, to grow and expand. And all right. That. So you would go to a third box when it, you're seeing that they're ready for yeah. building a lot of honey. I wouldn't. I wouldn't give them more living area. I would give them more honey room. Okay. Yeah. I wouldn't. I mean, some people actually go like three boxes, four boxes. You can go as high as you want. I've seen four. Yeah. Living space. There's some people that just do one. There's some people, like what I'm doing, have two that are available. Mm -hmm. It all depends on what works for you. Yeah, this, these guys are doing what they're supposed to do, even though I'm not telling them. Because they have honey up here, and all their, they're living down there, okay. which is perfectly fine. So that was all honey? Yep, this is all honey up here. One of these frames came out of that one. Okay. Because these guys were queenless, actually. That's why 
You always want to have, you don't want to start with one. You always start two or more. Two hives? Yeah. Okay. Because if one gets in trouble, you can sometimes get away with it and grab from your other hive to give them a little help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Try to save them. But yeah, if you ever do bees, I would go that route. Okay. Just because when these were brand new, there was nothing on it. So it was a free for all on what the bees wanted to do, and I'd be in here twisting. And okay, so that's how you correct that. Yeah. Okay. What I was trying to do is get away with not having plastic in it. And all right. That kind of stuff, but. Yeah, but then how do you get the honey off of that without melting um, that? How you would get the honey off of these one or this one? Actually, it'd be easier to get honey off of that than this. Is that right? Because this, you put in like you put it into your rotating or honey extract. Okay. And why well, it doesn't spin. But because this has no um, support in it, it's more likely to okay. break off and make a mess. Right. Really the biggest hurdle for a beekeeper is, is getting the comb for them to build it. Okay. Yeah. Where, like these guys came in the boxes. They started building comb pretty quickly. Not as fast as those ones over there. Because those guys were a true swarm, they take a bunch of honey with them for storage, for their ride and all that. Right. Because they have to start some, somewhere. They're ready to make wax. Where these guys, eh, we kind of make wax, but we might not be as good at bees as doing it. Now, are these young bees when you get them? Um, they're whatever they dump in. Oh, okay, okay. Most likely what they do is they probably have a bunch of hives and they just, Shake them, shake them into a box. Okay. And throw a queen in there. Yeah. And that's actually that's actually the problem with these, is that the the queen is not related at all to these guys. Well, I mean it could be, but they're poor. Okay. Probably what happened this one, and probably over that one, they most likely didn't like their queen, so that's why that one's queenless. All right. But um, this one was queenless, but they created their own now, so they're happy. Until that queen makes them mad. Right. Or on. <laughs> but, um, what is it? She has to lay so many eggs, or they start wondering what's going on. On the other side of that, she could be laying a lot of eggs. Um, her brood patterns could be terrible. Like over there, you saw the little holes. Right. That would be everywhere. Like there'd be one here missing, one here, 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 here. And that's your brood pattern. Where you want it like that, covering the whole area. The area. Okay. Like a few spots are okay, but you don't want a lot missing. Okay. The other thing is, these guys are from Georgia. Okay. So it doesn't really snow in Georgia. Right. So these guys are in for a treat this this way. Sure. I mean, they'll kind of figure it out. Like, oh, it's snowing. Like, oh boy. Where those guys over there, it's like, oh, it's snowing. Like, whatever. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> I'm not going that way. The, um, the bristles on that brush, um, what it does is it flicks them. Okay. And they do not like to be flicked. Oh, okay. So that's why you don't want to use that. Yeah. That you really only use for when you're collecting like honeycomb. Okay. You always want to look quick when you're taking something off to make sure the queen's not on it. Because you don't want to get her out of the hive and lose her. Uh. So when she's out, you, she could, you could possibly... Yeah, she could get stepped on. Uh, oh, yeah. Go flying off. There's a lot of things. Most likely she'd just come back home. When these guys are new, that's what your problem is. You want the queen to stay because if she leaves, the rest will leave with her. Okay. But once they get a, a brood nest in there, that's when they, it's now home. Okay. That's when they consider it home. I mean, they'll even grow like, um, they'll put wax in here. And they'll just leave wax if they don't like the place. Oh. But um, once they get baby bees in it, ah, we're stuck here now. <laughs> Actually, this version right here, I'm not very fond of. Because? Because of how the rails are and just the center. They may, actually, when I bought this, they were out of stock of these. But um, there's another version that comes straight out, like through the hooks that you can just slide right on oh, okay. instead of having the front bar slide it down and squish you know the bees will get in here and you might squish them right 
This is brand new comb right there. Hmm. See how flexible it is? Yeah. I can just bend it with a tapping it. But it's also a good sign that they're building because that means they've got resources to build. Because I forget what the ratio is. It takes a lot of honey to make wax. Honey to make wax? Yeah. Oh. Because instead of storing honey, they're creating wax. Okay. So, and that's why beekeepers, there's the crush and strain method, which is where you just crush the wax and all, mm -hmm. and then the bees will have to rebuild their wax. Whereas the plastic ones, you just take a knife, cut off the cap, and every all the, the um, cells are still left intact. Okay. So they'll just clean it up and then refill it. Oh, okay. So they don't have, and then all they have to do is cover them up over again. So you're not dealing with all that build again? Yeah. That right there is a mad bee. You can actually tell when they're mad too by they will actually go hit you. Oh, okay. They'll just bounce off. And at that point, you know you have to smoke them again. Actually, that one's heavy. Yeah, that's more like a normal. That's more of a normal flame oil wet. Wow. And you can see these ones right here. They're just beginning to cap them. Not what I want you guys to be doing. Because keep going that way, you'll make a mess. And just imagine this. There's people that don't even wear suits at all. Yeah, I've seen just it. Go right in. How do they not get stung? I saw a wax there. Or a uh, too. Yeah. These guys are big. You see how these ones are darker though? Right. That's more of the ones that'll grow or put it right up against the, the wax. Okay. Or the honey. Yep. Whereas those ones didn't feel or they were just genetically just the way they are, they built a dome over it. But they only they only cap it when it's down to a certain um, humidity. Like what is what would you call that? Hydrometer. Um, Barometer? Yeah. For max, for... The water, well, it's the water content. Okay. Humidity? It's not humidity, it's something else. But, um, once it... You really want a piece of me. <laughs> once it gets down to, um, where it's... Honey, well, once it's capped, it's not honey. Okay. But, um, when it's uncapped, it's still close. But um, you run the risk of fermenting the honey. Oh, okay. When you bottle it. Yeah. But um, once it's capped, it's ready. Uncapped, like. Uh, because this, like these this over one, here aren't. Yeah, I mean this one probably wouldn't be a good example. Like you want to have at least most of the frame hmm. covered. I mean, you can still harvest it. You just can't store it for very long. Okay. What do you think so far? I think it's pretty cool. Not as bad as they say. These are the same things as killer bees. Just the docile version. The docile version of it. Like the genetics are docile, being docile. Huh. But killer bees, all they are is aggressive honeybees. Is that right? Yep. I mean, there's enough bees in here to kill you. No one's trying to. Uh, should I take a more from the bottom of this one? Be nice to find a queen for you. Call you and be like, Chuck's here? No! <laughs> there we go. Where'd they head that way? That's loaded right up, isn't it? It is. Because this is the, the brood frames, or supposedly, there's a lot more bees. But um, if you were up here in the honey section, 
there would be like 10, 15 bees on a frame. Right. They're not just covering it. Because they don't really have a reason to be up there other than they'll be storing and condensing it down to store it. You see how that one's kind of come out from there? Mm -hmm. That's the problem with when you're doing this. The free frame. Okay, because they they just you could knock it off. Yeah, when I pull it up, I might actually damage it. Oh, more honey. That's your bees there, right? Um, or is that honey? At the bottom corner? Yeah. yeah. That's honey, that's bees. Okay. That's a fine, uh, you actually see where they have a hole there? You're right. That's, they call them communication holes. <laughs> oh, guys. Those, that's drones right there. Okay. Really, you don't want a lot of drones. What they do is um, the vermoral mites, they rather go and attack a drone than um, a female because a drone takes longer to hatch. Okay. Do you know what what I'm talking about when I'm saying vermoral? Uh, what? Vermoral mites. Vermoral mites? Yeah. No. What they do is they, um, before the, um, the larva is capped, they will go in, a female varroa will go in with the bee and then get capped over. Okay. And what she does is she lays a male and a bunch of females. They all feed off of the little larva bee okay. while it's while it's in the cell. And then when the bee hatches, it could it could have issues like diseases. Oh. But um they prefer the drones because drones take longer to hatch out because they have a longer cycle. They just prefer that. Okay. And what actually what they actually do is they um there's like plastic frames like that, but they have like the printed the gr printed grid. They have the bigger the bigger cell size. Uh -huh. What they do is they have the, the larger plastic grid, and you make and you put that in there. The queen comes in, lays the egg, and then you they cap them over. Mm -hmm. And what you do is at that point that they're capped over, you pull that frame out and you put it in your feeder. So you're killing. You're losing drones, which doesn't really matter too much. Right. But you're killing the vermoroa that have gone in with them. Okay. Well, how do you how do you know how do you prevent that from happening? Um, the varroa. Mm-hmm. There's really no way. Okay. Um, they're almost like ticks on a dog. Kind of thing. Okay. You you walk through the woods, you don't find ticks wherever you go. Right. Okay. And. The way these bees, the habit of these bees is, if this colony is weak, these guys, they don't care. They'll go in here and rob them of their honey okay. and take it home. But they're also taking the pest into their hive. Oh, yeah. And the raw weakens these guys, so it, that's how it's passing on. Most of the time, you don't really have to go into this depth. Like, you can just look at the top, see how they're doing, mm -hmm. take a quick look. You're like, okay, you guys are good. You can kind of see what she does is she starts in the center and she goes out and you can see the older ones are out here. Okay. Actually, that one right there, that's freshly hatching right there. Alright, I see it. But um, they expand and what she'll do is she'll go in the middle and then re relay. Huh. Drones, as you, you see how the size difference is? Yeah, yeah. They're closer to a queen than... The workers? Yeah. She just has a very long behind. Because she has to, her bottom has to go to the bottom of the, the cell. Right, okay. Here's what happens. If you have a, um, they call them laying workers, if there's no queen, there might be eggs, but um, what happens is any, any of those eggs automatically become a drone because she's, they're unfertilized. Oh, okay. 
This is also why a lot of people mark their queens. It was a lot, a lot easier to find a green dot right. or a white dot versus everybody else. Oh, looks like you not be able to get get a queen today. Out of everything else. Yeah. You can kind of see down there. There's a there's a gap between the bottom and the oh yeah the frame. Yep. There's probably what well, um you've seen those package beads at the post office, yeah. right? That would fill up probably about that much space of a hive. Okay. So that just shows you how many bees are in here. <laughs> wow. And, and how fast they, they multiply. Mm -hmm. I think she can lay like four, maybe maybe 4,000 eggs a day. Yeah. But you know this is how we're, we're here, we're disturbing them, but they're mostly content to yeah. just keep an eye on you. Now this is the worst thing you can do. I'm taking this one and I'm giving it to the other one. Oh. I mean, there might be a few that kind of accidentally make back on there, mm -hmm. but they could, those ones, because they're different bees, they'll try to kill each other. So you'll take one out of that one? Uh, I'm putting it in. Oh, here. in this one? Yeah. So will you take an empty one? Um, I'm probably going to take... What is this? Uh, yeah, I'm just going to take an empty one. And give it to them. <laughs> That's actually how you... Oh, you get them out of the, the, um, the shipping container. Oh, you yeah. yeah. Flip them over and give them a whack. They don't like that either. Oh. What? Where are each of these? You can probably see that much better now. Yeah. A lot of those eggs in there. Yeah, yeah. And most likely what they'll do is they'll take one of these the smaller larva here, mm -hmm. they make an emergency oh. cell because they don't have to keep it. And I just broke some honey. Sorry guys. They'll actually go in there and just suck it all up and put it back. And see what I'm doing here? I'm making sure there's enough space on each side. Right, yeah. Because if you go over one side, they'll just grow They'll just keep growing. Okay. I have this open, so all the wasps in the area are thinner. They eat the bees or the. Um, I think they'll go after. They'll mostly go after honey, but they will go after the baby bees. Okay. There's actually um people that take this size hive, and they only put nine frames. Then they have a tool that spaces them correctly. Okay. And what that does, it makes the it makes the comb wider. So when you cut the, the wax off, it's a lot instead of it what happens is sometimes it's below the frame. Mm -hmm. So it's you have to kind of scoop into it to get it off. Whereas this you just go slice right off and it's nice and oh, okay. Rearrange you. Give you a smoke break. Yeah. Yep. When these when these lids are brand new, they're actually they just go right on it. These gloves are only like four months old, so. Is there any way you can get that off? Um, I could probably wash them. This is actually goat leather. Goat leather. Okay. I think I that might be the high. That might be high, but this is a lot more flexible than that one. Okay. Those were the cheaper ones because yeah. we got those from Draper's now. Yep. Because those ones are probably kind of thick when you move them. Mm -hmm. These ones are very flexible. Okay. So, that, I mean, they're more expensive, but they're a lot easier to work with, especially when you're trying to like, grab the frames. Meticulous, frames. yeah. But um, pretty much now, what I have to do is, which one was it? That one. Was it that one that was? Yeah, I put it. I have to check that one in a week now 
to make sure that building is clean. Okay. And if they're not, then I really have problems. And I'll have to figure out if I want to. What you can do is you take a. It's almost like a well newspaper. You would take that one, put it on top of this one, put a piece of newspaper in between, mm -hmm. and they'll eat through and kind of. What are you doing? And then they'll merge together. Because if you if you don't have the newspaper, you put them on top. You're like intruders. Okay. And there's going to be a all out war. Okay. Right now it's getting starting to get late in the season, and any problem now will affect winter and your survivability. Right. Any question? <laughs> That's a lot of information. Yep. And there's a lot of stuff I didn't say yet. <laughs> but um, if you, there's too much space up here, it's too much for them to handle. If there's not enough space in here, they'll, they'll create a swarm. Okay. When the bottom box is 80% full, is you add another box. Alright. So when you put the original swarm in, you don't, you only have one box. Yep. Actually, with that one over here, I started, it's the same size, the new boxes, like that one over there. I start, because I bought three of the, or I had enough for three. You ordered. Yeah. And then I was like, I'm going to get another, when I was at Draper's, like, do you have any extras? So that I got one more and I threw them in that and then you I had to buy all to that stuff. You just be on your leg and we just did it again. Oh. <laughs> Probably want to see But, um, that's a bald face tournament. There's one of those flying around. Mm hmm. Again. It's probably getting late in the season uh, and they want to, they want to get, that's why this is so small. Because they, there's going to be defender bees down here. Mm hmm. And they, you you could actually, if a foreign bee came in here, you could actually see them and then they'll come rolling out onto the ground oh, yeah. fighting which is quite cool to watch but um yeah the mice during the winter because this is a nice warm spot yep. and then protecting the hive in the winter you come out and just keep it keep it open yep um well actually I, i'll probably leave these on but what what we'll have to do is we'll have to get like a thin metal, metal thing with a hook on the end mm -hmm. and go in here and then pull the dead bees out Oh, okay. because they rarely leave the hive during the winter because it's just how cold it is. Right. But they'll they'll take um, potty break. They'll come out, do their business, fly back right in. Right back in, okay. Yeah. But they won't um, clean it out as far as I the mean, dead bees. I mean, they'll cl try to clean it out, but um, there'll just be so many dying in here mm. that they die, they fall to the ground, they make a pile. Okay. And if the pile gets too high and blocks the airflow, then you're then you got more problems. Right. This is the first time I've seen a lot of wasps fly. There weren't just any wasps before, were they? No. I mean the only thing I can think of is because we opened them up so much and we took a little bit longer, it probably mm -hmm. attracted them. Plus it's late in the season, so they're probably trying to get they're stored probably, up. Yeah. Trying to get whatever they can get.